Hello once again, it's Tubal Cain, your YouTube shop teacher, continuing with a series of three or four videos on cutting key seats or keyways on the closing horizontal mill. This, of course, can be done on any horizontal mill. Furthermore, I have at least five different videos in the archives regarding cutting uh, key seats on the vertical mill. So this is just a little bit different, but the uh, results are the same. Now, in the last video in this series, the previous video, I cut a key seat in one inch shaft using a three inch cutter, quarter inch wide. Perhaps you don't have one, but perhaps you have some woodruff key seat cutter. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Same setup, same dimensions because it's also a one inch shaft and quarter inch wide uh, cutter. It will be a straight key seat again for a square key. In the following video I will do one uh, with uh, cutting a key seat for a woodruff key. So watch for that as well. Alright, let's get started. Again now, there are several ways of holding the work. One would be right in a, one of the T-slots like this, but then you've got clamps that are sometimes in the way. And you may not have the reach that you need from your spindle with the uh, rather stubby short cutter. Now do not hold it in this groove out here because this is not a machined groove, that's just cast in. So it has to be one of the T-slots and it's going to depend of course on the diameter of your stock. This is one inch. I'm going to hold the stock in the vise as I did last time and the vise has already been indicated in, it has not been moved so I know that it's perfectly squared up with the spindle and so on but again we have a little bit of a problem here on thinner stock this would be so much overhang that it might vibrate or chatter or, or move on you not so with the one inch, I'm not worried about that at all but there's also a problem here of the reach of this tool holder and that's uh, half inch tool holder. Do we have clearance right here? Is this going to hit the vise? So double check that before you get started. Again that's a Woodruff key seat cutter with a half inch shaft. Do not hold it in a drill chuck. It could be held in a collet or this type of holder. From this view this is the clearance that I'm talking about. And looking at it from this direction is the vise going to clear the column of the machine? So check all of those things before you start cutting. I'll be using a, a speed of 435 RPM and a feed of 0.44 inches per minute. Same as, same feed as the last one. Different speed though. Alright, a correction here. I changed it to 400 RPM, a little bit slower. This is one inch diameter cutter, quarter inch thick. Now, Woodruff key seat cutters have a weak point, and it's right here on the neck. So you need to take fairly light cuts, uh, reasonable cuts, and use common sense so you don't break it off right at that point, and then you're done. The first thing I want to do is set the cutter on the center line of the one inch shaft. Now I'm going to touch off. Now there are several ways of doing that. One is to use tape, and I showed that in a previous video, or you can just use a piece of paper, or for that matter it probably would be accurate enough to just come up and touch. But I think I'll use the paper. This is a piece of cardstock that's about three thousandths thick. Bring it up until I feel the paper drag. A little too much. Make sure you remove the back backlash, by the way. I feel a drag, so now I'm within 3,000, so I'll add that 3,000th to the dimension that I need to move it over. So how far am I going to move it over once I drop the table? Half of the thickness of the cutter and the radius of the work which is a total of 0.625 or 5A, same as it was in the other video. So I'll drop the table and zero out the y-axis. I'm going to move in again 625 thousandths. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, twenty-five, and lock the table. And now you can see from this view that I'm right on the center line of the shaft. Now we need to touch off and raise our table to the correct depth for the first pass. And I'm going to make a roughing cut and a finishing cut. I'm using tape, but you could use paper, or it probably would be accurate enough to just come up and very carefully touch the work. But if you're doing this for the first time, this would be recommended. I'm very close now, so I'll turn the machine on. And I hit the tape. You can see that the tape has been cut, so I'm effectively right on the work now. I'm not even going to allow for the thickness of the, of the tape, but the depth of the key seat needs to be 142 thousandths. I showed you how to find that in the last video, and remember the depth depends on the size of the key and the diameter of the shaft, so it's not always the same. So I'm going to remove the tape and the first pass will be 100 thousandths deep, so I'll raise the table 100 thousandths and I'm going to make it inch and a half long which is up to that little black line that you see right there. I'm going to use plenty of oil. I'll turn the crank two revolutions which is 100 thousandths. Now that will vary on uh, machines. A full revolution is a one hundred thousandths on a bridge port. It's only fifty thousandths on this closing. Do make sure that your work table is clean. Work safely. Only the tools that you need. Uh, perhaps a brush and the oil can. Any other mess that you have put on a separate table or in this case I have it down on the lower part of the machine. No rags anywhere near this and make sure you are running the cutter in the correct direction which is forward on this machine. And I'm engaging the feed. Some of this will be sped up. That completes the roughing pass, so now another 42 thousandths for the finishing pass, and then I should be at the full depth. There's 42. Always approach your number slowly so you do not have to back up and deal with backlash. And I'm right on the mark. Now let's take a measurement. I believe I'll check the dimension while it's still in the vise. I cleaned out the key slot, key seat, there's the key. Now remember the dimension across here should be 1.109. So taking the caliper, I think I'll lock it that. See if I can get it out of there. And what do we got? 
1.110, so I'm a little bit over. So I'm within uh, one and a half thousandths or one thousand, but plenty close. So I'm right on now. It's safe to take the work out of the vise. Actually, before I take it out, I think I'll take a file and remove the burr. There's always some burrs left, even with a sharp cutter. And that was a brand new cutter, by the way, the KBC tool. You know, that's a real clean key seat, isn't it? Better than the one I did the other day because the cutter was brand new. Pulley goes right on, and let's see if the key goes in. And it does. Okay, that concludes this video. Hope you liked it. Now in the next video, in the same setup, I'm not going to change anything here. I'm even going to use the same cutter and I'm going to cut in this same shaft a woodruff key. Not a whole lot different other than it's a plunge cut. So be sure and watch that video when available. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. Hope you like these videos. Uh, get, leave a comment if you do. And I'll see you next time.